Spoon. Yeah. Remember, on the nose, hold it. Yeah, yeah. You know what they should do is play spoons growing up. Remember that? Oh, I love spoons. Put spoons on the thing. Play the cards. My, my beautiful, Your my, my amazing Boom. mom, sweetest, loves God. You throw in her a game of spoons, and I remember when she dove across the table and bit my hand until I let go of the spoon. <laughs> She's so competitive, though. You get mom bit in a game, hand. she would get you. Bit it. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back. Yes. Morning. She latched on like a pit bull. <laughs> you know, you can't get a pit bull off. <laughs> Welcome to Wake Up. We wake up. Wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. We got a great word for you and a scripture today. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good to have you with us. We're talking about and continuing on your, uh, your message. The mask. Yeah. Unmask it. Take that mask off. Yeah. You were designed to go forth in your day to, to bring joy and to be peace. And what happened as a kid yeah. is people made fun of, and then you get your heart broken and things with your parents. And you thought that putting a mask on, walling things up, yep. getting yourself and going out into the world was protecting you, but instead it was hindering you from being and experiencing God's best in your life. It's true. And, and you really were bringing out that, that, the, the idea that we're comparing we get into envy and that the world is, is perpetuating this message of, of comparing what you have or what you look like or who you're married to to everything else. Right. You get on Facebook and right away it's comparison. Yeah. And everybody that throws their stuff on Facebook, it's right. They, they got the little programs. They take all the wrinkles out. They, they get their blood they out of everything. And they spend all this time. And yeah. they're like, hey, just a quick shot of myself. I was thinking about the, the show Survivor. Do you ever watch the show Survivor? Oh, my gosh. I, don't know if you watch it. I love the show Survivor. Me and my whole family will sit Are down Are you back and watch in now in this season? All Game Changers is a really good season. So good. Yeah. And, and one thing you learn about Survivor pretty early on as far as strategy goes is that if you... If you win the challenge, so there's two teams on the island, and they don't have food, yeah. they don't really have water, like they're really struggling, and then suddenly there's a challenge, and if your team wins the challenge, um, they get like hamburgers and fries, oh. and, or make like they go to a, like a massage with a, what the waterfalls, yeah. and they get pampered for a day. Okay, yeah. if you come back from your reward talking about how great it was, you're out. It's really bad strategy because everyone like in your face is like, oh, that's so awesome. You had such a great reward. I'm so glad that you had that. You got to have a great day. Yeah, you ate yeah. a burger. And then they, but then they get the camera away from them later. And that person's like, I can't believe they came back and rubbed my nose in it. Right. And told me. And nobody really celebrates each other's wins anymore. Now watch this though. Nobody celebrates each other's rewards. I told Holly when I we get envious. When I get on Survivor, so when you get down to like it's individual and you get a reward challenge. Yeah. So we're all going. I'm like, I'll never win that because what happens is you win. And now you get to go have burgers and get a massage or wherever and go to the thing. And they go, okay, now pick two other people to go with you. And there's like seven people in the group. It's the worst thing in the world. Because so you pick two. You pick two and then everybody, envy is so powerful yeah. that you're going to get voted Five off. Five people are I said, so honey, mad at you now. I said, honey, we, I never win that one. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to throw it. Yeah. Because I don't want to be the one that picks because yeah. you're going to because envy is so powerful yeah. it'll take people out of their game they have a great strategy we're working together it looks like they're gonna make it to the end yeah. envy vote them off get them out of here yeah and so what, what happens sometimes to people is like you, you're on facebook and you see like oh look at the the so-and-sos went to fiji for a week yeah and then and but then all of a sudden you're like my husband never takes me to fiji <laughs> And that you were happy with your husband that morning. Like, everything was great. 30 but then you ago. saw someone else went to Fiji, and now you're mad. Now yeah. you're mad at your marriage. You're mad at your life. We never get to go to Fiji. Oh, when are we ever to... You read, you're reading, the comparison my husband, stole your joy. My husband made a picnic this weekend. And took, my husband never makes a picnic. So he doesn't to, do anything. But learn to be content with what you what have. What you have. Be excited for what you have, but excited also about where God is taking and you. And so, uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11 um, I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. No, wait, you said whatever. Whatever the circumstance. Whatever it is. I learned to be happy. In any circumstance, though. And this is a guy that was shipwrecked. This He's was a prison. guy that people stoned him. He was in they prison. stoned him to death. <laughs> and then he got up. <laughs> he got up. You can't stone Paul to death. Uh-uh. And, and it says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. Like, I've been on both sides of the coin, right? I, lo I, I, I had nothing. I've been in place. It, one one place I've been a, a base and I've been abound. Oh, yeah. So I was abounding, man. I was rolling in it. <laughs> and I've learned the secret of being content in any situation, whether I'm well fed or whether I'm hungry, whether I'm living in plenty or in want. 
I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And I love what he's saying here because he's really trying to talk to the masses. He's trying to talk to everybody because people, when they're in lack, go, well, it's easy to be content when you have a lot. He's yeah. like, and he's trying to say, no, 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 no. You can be content when you have nothing. Yeah. You can be content. You have the ability. A lot and, of it's relative. In America, even people who have nothing have more. Than go to Gulu, Africa. Than people who live in other places. So you actually are, are, you could be pretty wealthy and you think you're the poor person. Because why? Because it's always based on comparison. Yeah. Who are you comparing yourself to? It's better just not to compare yourself at all. Is it? And, you know, we grew up in a home and I think it's why we flow so naturally easy with this. And it, it was so easy for me to teach this. Yeah. Because we grew up in a home that when we stayed, moved out here to Arizona, we were in a trailer. No, when you now, say a trailer, it was... One of those things with the two wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a, it was a little bit. Can of I thing. just give you a fact? I slept on the table we ate on. <laughs> that's a tr- that's fact. Now what, there was no now, bed for now, me. Now what did mom no say? Bed. Did mom say, "Oh my God, where's God?" And we have to. No, mom's like, "Oh my God, look, we, we have a pool. We have a pool, and you have shuffleboard." Now the pool didn't have water in it, but we still had a pool <laughs> in our trailer park. And we grew up right there. Remember when mom and dad said, oh, we are going to go on a vacation to Arizona. <laughs> it's a vacation to Arizona. It was seven days in a Buick. In a Buick, yeah. With no TV. We didn't have video games. We just had me and Jason going, all right, see who can stare the longest. <laughs> all the way through Colorado. This is what we did. 12 hours a day. Just see who would blink. <laughs> Slug bug. Oh, my gosh. I mean, you invent games. You invent games. And, but... Our parents were amazing at, at, and our first house in Arizona it was in a really bad neighborhood. Yeah. And every night there'd be guns going off, but at the time, mom and dad like, it's fireworks. Oh, it's fireworks. God's so People good. Celebrating. Look what God bless us. You know, uh, learn to be content in all things. Don't worry about what other people have. Don't and, be into that. And you watch mom and dad's in life, fact, though. Sell it, learn how to celebrate what other people are winning. That's what we lived in. We celebrate. Everybody had more than we did. But mom and dad were always talking about how good God is. Yeah. We're blessed. We have a little bitty house. Oh, God is so good to us. Yeah, it was better well, than the trailer. We got one beat up car. God, look at our car and it it's doesn't still break down. It still runs. That 1972 Two. Buick ran, I don't know, Forever. 300,000 300, miles. Somebody maybe? was amazed. We watched the speedometer because it didn't have the extra digit. We saw it roll over to zero three times. Probably three times. Because it, it was always times. a celebration. And every it's time we watch it, we we'd be watching her driving, and we're like, it's new. It's, <laughs> it's brand, brand new. new. We have a brand new car. Zero miles Zero. on this bad boy. One mile. Because in those days, the odometer only went up to 99,000. 999. It, it didn't have a the another digit. digit. Yep. And we're like, this car is worth more money now. It's got seven miles on it. <laughs> it's got seven <laughs> miles. But that, that angels were just holding that thing together, oh. man. <laughs> just like, <laughs> He's whole, pressing the gas. Make it go. They're pushing. It was a whole lot. That's the only car I remember. <laughs> yeah. The 72 Buick. But we were content. You, you learn how to be content. And I'm not saying that I haven't always, you know, everyone gets falls off the wagon and gets into envy and can get their, their attitude down. Everybody at some time or another can be like, oh, you know, I just wish that th- this or that, or I wish I had that. I remember sometimes seeing kids and saying, I wish I had Legos. And I remember coming home. We never had saying, Legos. You know, this kid's got like a room full of Legos. It's so much fun. And I mean, and then you get mad. You're like, I, I have a drawer full of socks. I have a spoon. We'd play with a spoon out back and a car. But just so you know, I want you to know where we got the spoon that was a toy. Because our mom, we couldn't play with spoons that were out of the drawer. No, no, Where no, did no. we get the spoon? Do you remember? I found one in the, in the backyard. Yeah, we it, found we, it in the backyard. Yeah, I found it. We, it did, we were digging around there. and we found a spoon. It was treasure. It was. We found treasure. Yeah, it had like little jagged edges. It was like a spoon knife. You and that? you know what? We're so creative today because that's what we had to do. Maybe. We did. We, we would have a sock and we would play sock basketball because we didn't have a basketball hoop at the time. No. And we had the curtains. Remember the curtains? Yeah, the curtains. And you'd shoot into the curtains. <laughs> yeah. Sock football. Sock football. We'd play knee football. Oh we played that until we were in high school. Yep. And uh, so Let's pray anyway, over the day. Pray over the day. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you that you are a great God. Mm. And whether we're abounding, whether we got or we don't, mm. that we learn to be content. We're content with what we have. And what happens, Lord, we know that a dad loves it when he's got thankful kids. Mm. And he wants to give more. To th- if I can trust you to be happy with what you got, I know that I can give you more. And so we want to be those people that are always happy, always excited. We want mm. to be like Tom and Marine, that no matter where we were at, mm-hmm. they were always thankful to God. And you watch their life go from level to level to level because they were like David, mm. who were always thankful, had a heart after God to say, God, thank you for what we have. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you like today's Thumbs show, up. give us a share. Don't forget to be in God's house this weekend. That's Don't forget about thing. mom and dad's 50th. That's tonight. 
tonight. How fun is that? I'm so excited about tonight. It's at the church. It's at 6.30. Yeah. Dancing and food. We're going to marry them. And we are going to marry them. Well, has that ever happened before? I mean, maybe. I'm sure that we're, we're not the son first ever. remarried the parents. Yeah, two sons. I don't think two sons under five foot eight have ever done it. Wow, we're reaching. I think this is the first time in history. <sighs> okay, so we have to hold this on our noses. Get your jelly bean. Get it, get it, get it. No, I still have it, right? Did it fall off? Get your jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen so fast? I don't know. Jelly bean it. I, I, jelly bean it. Oh, gosh. Jelly bean. These are barf. Really bad. These are dog food. Yesterday was socks. really bad. No, the, it was, no, he was still, he was trying to. Was it? <laughs> oh, gosh. Was it Wednesday? It was Wednesday. It was a sock. Wednesday was the ago. dirty sock one. Oh, gosh. It was really bad. And yesterday okay. I had grass, and that wasn't bad. Because I grew up eating grass. We didn't have food. I wish I could smell, but I walked it won't. seven miles in the snow. He did say that some of them taste good. I get it. I believe God. He's not good. Oh wait, that's I just saw, I'm celebrating in your in your defeat. What just happened? I celebrate in your defeat. Out of the abundance of the, the heart, heart, the mouth speaketh. Dog poo. Oh, what that's is he? bad. <laughs> what is he? Tell me. What? No, you you eat him. Eat him. It's rotten fish. Oh, no, I couldn't eat it. I couldn't eat it. I could not. We'll see you to Monday. Have a great weekend. Be in Yuck. church. That is terrible. For we do not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves, but they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves as a whole mouthful, are not what? They're not wise when we get into comparison. But I want you to realize that the world we live in is driven by comparison. It is driven. Every marketing that is out there and the world markets is designed to make you feel like you are less than, that you don't have it, that unless you get it, you're not going to be successful, that unless I get that new shiny car, I'm not going to be happy. And if I don't get those new Nike clubs, I'm not going to be good. At and everything that they show you is that you don't have what somebody else has and that you are lacking things that other people have. And it deteriorates your self-worth until the fact they know that if they can get your self-esteem low enough that you'll buy anything to try and buy some happiness. How many people know that you only buy a second of happiness, not a lifetime of happiness, until you realize that my happiness does not come from what I have out me, but what I have inside of me.